Okay, on this side of the roof, we're doing red cedar shingles. These are 18 inch cedar shingles. We're gonna have a standard inch and a half overhang at the bottom of the roof. And to get that, I've just nailed on a scrap two by four and then put this little cleat on the end to, to keep my shingles from sliding off while I'm working. And uh, we're gonna do an overhang on this side. We're just gonna use a cut off of five quarter trim just as a spacer. To fasten the cedar shingles, I use one and a half inch stainless steel siding nails. They won't rust or leave streaks on the roof, and they're just long enough to secure the shingles without poking through on the inside. With the undercourse shingles in place, I need to remove the ledger board and 2x4 spacer to make room for the next course of shingles. The first finished course, the one that covers our undercourse here, is going to overhang by a quarter inch. Okay, now to make this shingle job easier, we have this ledger board. Um, now on the sidewall shingles, we'd normally just tack this right in, but because it's a roof, we want to avoid holes. So we're just gonna use these extension pieces that go up. A couple of hand drive finish nails so we can back them out later. And the top of this board lines up with my five inch exposure. And now I can just take my shingles, lay them out, then once I get them all racked up here, I can just go down with the nailer and put them all in in one shot. Now this jig won't work when you get to the very top of the roof. At that point, we're gonna have to snap lines and line them up the old fashioned way. Now I'm leaving about a quarter inch or so between these to let them move a little bit without hitting each other and causing them to curl. And I'm being careful to overlap them so that none of these seams are in line. They should be at least a good inch, inch and a half away from each other. Okay, now when I get towards the end over here, I'm gonna work a little bit to see if I can find a shingle that's gonna make my life easy, that I won't have to do any cutting and fitting. It doesn't always work out and I don't spend a whole lot of time on it, but you know, with your stack of shingles laying up here, it's worth taking a minute or two to you can save yourself a minute or two. See, this is pretty close. What I'm gonna do is just kind of play with my spacing on the shingles here and just kind of slide things over a little bit. There you go. I'm comfortable placing my nails by eye, but you can also mark the nailing location on the arms of the jig and use a string line to guide the fastener placement. This ensures that the nails are aligned to the skip sheathing below and will be hidden by the next course of shingles. I don't bother trimming the shingles at the top of the shed before installing them. Instead, just let the last couple of courses go along and then come back to trim the overhanging portion with a circular saw. Finally, straighten up the overhanging edge with a quick pass of the circular saw. Okay, that's it for the cedar shingles. Now we're going to go to the other side of the roof and work on the polycarbonate. On the back of the shed, I'm going to be using translucent corrugated panels that let in lots of sunlight. To get started, I clamp the panels together and cross cut them with a circular saw. To get clean cuts, the roofing manufacturer recommends mounting the saw blade backwards. Pre-drill through the raised portion of the panels, not through the troughs where water is more likely to seep in. Just like on the other side of the roof, I use a spacer and ledger board to establish an even overhang at the bottom of the roof and attach panels with gasketed screws to seal out water. As I work my way across the roof, the panels are overlapped and fastened. Unless you're really lucky, the last panel will need to be ripped to width. Again, use a circular saw with the blade mounted backwards and wear ear protection because the noise isn't pleasant. At the ridge, I make a cap from two pieces of cedar beveled so that they meet at the same angle as the roof slope. To make things easier, I start the screws while the pieces are flat on the table, and then join the pieces together. Okay, now we can just drop this pre-assembled cedar ridge right into place. To fasten the cap, I use nails on the cedar side and stainless steel screws on the corrugated side.
Okay, that's it for our ridge cap. Now we're gonna get down off the roof, finally, and get back to work on the windows, trim, and siding.